So here on this Tobacco University video, we're going to be considering uh, post-harvest cannabis plant disposal as well as other supporting plant materials required when you're growing outdoors and how we should best approach kind of considering their disposal. looking at a pretty large scale outdoor growing operation here and looks like a lot of plants want to be considered of disposal of the plant material as well as some of the supporting plant material in this example such as the plastic used for weed block as well as considering the support cages as well as any irrigation or stakes that they also have utilizing this grow. So first off, let's focus on disposal of the plant material. Per the EPA, canvas waste must be made un unusable and unrecognizable before disposal. Mixed with at least 50% non-canvas waste, such as non-consumable solids, and stored in a secured waste receptacle. Canvas waste can be disposed of in a permanent landfill or through composting, incineration, or by means of in-vessel digestion. Now, landfills, most canvas growers and processors are shipping canvas waste to landfills, so this is why it's under federal scrutiny. Composting as the goal is to provide optimum conditions for microbial metabolism to help that kind of breaking down of the process there of the plant material with the microbes. Then there's incineration, uh, which must occur at temperatures high enough to destroy the toxic organic uh, components in the hazardous waste as well as reduce the overall volume. However, with incineration, note that it is not the same as burning leaves in your backyard. It's a much more controlled process. Then, um, speaking of controlled processes, the in-vessel digestion is a more efficient method of composting, whereas the um, waste is confined within a building, container, or vesicle in order to mechanically control airflow, temperature, moisture, as well as odors. So this is just disposal of the actual plant material, but there's also those plant supporting materials we must consider. So for example, we have to consider the weed control. Uh, many times plastic or some form of row cover is utilized in season, but these must be removed from the field after harvest. Plastic is the most common for many reasons, but one of the drawbacks of using plastic is the end of the season disposals. We see that here. Uh, not only is removal a challenge, but the disposal can be even more challenging there. So getting it out of the field or out of the growing area, off to the side, and then removing it from here can also present lots of challenges. Biodegradable options do exist, but often they can leave field trash and may still need to be handled in some way or tilled. Um, so again, to be considerate of what weed control options you are utilizing. Then there's the irrigation. So if utilizing drip irrigation, this needs to be cleaned up at the end of the season. Many growers go with one-time use material that's only about four or six mil that can be sufficient for a single growing season. If you want to reuse the material, and this is referring to the drip tape, go with the 15 mil as if you take care of it, it can be used for over seven years, again, if it's handled properly. It might be better suited for smaller growing operations, larger growing operations that might be utilizing plastic as well. They might be wrapping up the irrigation with the plastic and disposing of it each and every grow cycle. Then lastly, disposal of the plant supports. So keep in mind that regardless of the method, method used, plants often need some sort of support. A lot of wind outside um, and a lot of other exposures. Some use trellis netting or stakes. These can be reused in some cases, but it's more common with stakes as they will go through a soak of some kind of sterilization before they're reused. Using this kind of screen method, this can be kind of a metal um, cattle fencing. Some growers uh, will utilize potentially concrete supports, uh, but keep in mind that don't just reuse it from time to time. Uh, go through, have a way of cleaning it. Even if your plants didn't have any disease, there's a chance it could be living on your stakes, could be living on your trail standing support, could be living on uh, your neighboring containers, your fencing. Be sure there's some form of sterilization process so that you're avoiding any potential carryover from one growing season to the next because particularly you could notice disease comes in really early uh, on your plants even though you didn't see it the year before because it's living on the stakes living on the support equipment affecting early plants do yourself a favor take that little extra time clean up the things you're using from year to year and ideally your plants as well as your harvest will thank you